test two review question seven, we're gonna start looking at some of the normal curve questions. Um, so for the standard normal curve, it just means we have zero in the middle. I like to draw the curve every time just to make sure my work makes sense. And we want the area between negative 2.345 up to 0.875. So this is an approximation, um, but it looks like a good chunk of the curve. So that's ways I could check my work. Um, so we're going to do normal CDF to find area. And we'll just do lower to upper and the calculator will do the work from here. So I'm expecting a decent amount of area. So second distribution, we always choose CDF, negative 2.345 up to 0.875, and we get an area of about 799, and then 699 is gonna round up to seven. And that makes sense with my drawing. So let's do a few more. Um, the area to the left, um, so one, zero is always in the middle and 1.454 is to the right side of zero. And area to the left means everything to the left. So again, we're gonna get a pretty big area because it's most of the curve. So since we don't have a lower endpoint, we call that negative infinity. And we call that 10, negative 10 to the 99 on the calculator. So it's always two points, the lower and the upper. So Normal CDF, negative 10 to the 99 is our trick for infinity, up to 1.454. So second distribution, CDF. And we get an area of about 9270. All right, ors and ands, the picture is really important because sometimes um, there might be no overlap, there might be a lot of overlap, so it's really important to sketch the curve to kind of check what's going on. So we're going to say greater than negative 2. So negative 2 will be here. Greater than negative 2 will be everything to the right. Or less than 1. Less than 1 would be here. And then or means either. Um, so anything shaded would be count because or is either. And what I notice is the entire curve is shaded. So the area would be one without using normal CDF because we shaded the entire curve. Uh, ands are now gonna look at overlaps. So again, it's really important to draw the curve to find out if they overlap and where they overlap. It's a little hard to figure that out without drawing the curve. So 2.5 will be way over here on the right and greater than would be to the right and then less than negative one is here. And so if I was doing either or, I would have two pieces. So in an or case, we'd find this one plus this one. Um, but because it's an and, I wanna find what they have in common, which is nothing. So since they have nothing in common, the area in common would just be zero. And we're looking at the area in common because it's an and. So we didn't even need to use normal CDF. So this is why it's so important to draw the curve. In part C, if you wanted to find the and, I'm not gonna do this, but this could be a, a bonus thing to try. The and is the overlap, so the and actually would be the area in between. So you would only find the in-between area. So hopefully that helps us see the difference. So sometimes there is an and. Again, why it's so important to draw the curve. All right, and then the z-score with area of 0.3 to the right. So now we're given area, this is when we go backwards. So 0 0.30 to the right. So I'm just gonna guess that it's over here somewhere. Um, we learned to use inverse norm, but inverse norm is area to the left. So there's 0 0.70 left over, because these add up to one. So we'll do inverse norm of 0 0.70. It's in the same menu on the calculator. Oops, and we get a z-score of, I made a typo. 0.524. We usually do three decimal places for z-scores. All right, so let's do a couple more normal examples. Um, pause the video if you need to catch up with your calculator. This is just to help you check your answers, not actually do the practice test. Um, so now we have a normal curve that's not a mean of zero, which means we need to find z-scores. So instead our mean is 3.27, and we want to find the area between 3 and 4.5. 
So we'll just have to approximate for now. But when we find the zeros, we can get it, the z scores, we can get a better idea. So we have to find two z scores and then we can do normal CDF. So the z score for three, hopefully we're getting better at this formula by now, will be three minus 3.27 and then divide by the standard deviation. And then for 4.5, we do the same thing. The only thing that changes is the first number minus the mean of 3.27, 1.3421. Let's find these two values. So we're converting it to the standard normal curve. So three is a negative z-score, which makes sense because it's on the left side of the mean. And so 4.5 should be positive because it's on the right side. And then once we have two z-scores, we can do normal CDF between the two z-scores. So normal CDF is looking at that standard normal curve. We're converting it to standard normal. So standard normal, it's the same area, but it's zero in the middle instead. So this is the same area. We just converted it to standard normal. So second distribution, CDF for normal, and lower comma upper, and we get an area of about 3998. So normal CDF tells us probabilities or area. All right, I think there are two more to try. Maybe there's three more, yeah. Um, so we're looking at the same data. Notice we have the same mean and standard deviation, but now we wanna find the middle 80%. So this one's the backwards because we're given 80% is the area. We don't know the z-scores. Um, before we can use inverse norm, we need to know the tails. So if we have 80%, that means we have 10 and 10 because that gives me 10 plus 80 plus 10 for 100%. So we're gonna do inverse norm of 10. And we get negative 1.282. Um, and that what we learned is that the, because of symmetry, we're going to get one negative 1.282 and positive 1.282. And then we can use that de-standardizing formula. So it's the mean plus or minus the z-score times mu. Uh, kind of similar to expected range with 2, but now the z-score isn't 2. Um, so we have a z-score of 3.27 plus or minus 1.282. The plus or minus is coming from the plus or minus. And then times the standard deviation. And I just totally wrote the wrong formula here. The mean plus or minus z score times standard deviation. I wrote down something different than what I said. 1.3421. Um, so I'm going to multiply just... So we get 3.27 plus or minus 1.72. That's enough decimal places. I usually just make these at least match. And I like to subtract first. It just makes more sense. So it's somewhere between, what's it take 1.55 and 4.99. So. so what that's telling me is for this data set, between 1.55 and 4.99 is 80% of the data. Question 10, we have the rainfall is normally distributed. So that's a hint we can use the normal curve with a mean of 4.5 and a standard deviation of 1.49. So first we just wanna draw the normal curve before we do anything which means we're gonna put 4.5 in the middle, and then we like to go three standard deviations in each direction. So I'm gonna pull out the calculator. So 4.5 plus 1.49, that's my first standard deviation, 5.99, and then we'll add 1.49, add 1.49, so 7.48 and 8.97, and then on the left side we'll subtract. So minus 1.49 from the mean, minus 1.49, minus 1.49. 
So we get 0 0.03, 1.52, and 3.01. And this is the rainfall in inches, just as a reminder, in Hayward in January. All right, and we're going to use this curve to maybe answer some questions. Um, so we want to shade the area that corresponds to what? More than six inches of rain. So we'll just approximate that. So there isn't six inches, but I see 5.99. And to me, that's close enough to six. And then more than means to the right. And now we're going to use the empirical rule to estimate the percentage of Januarys that have this much rain. So if we don't remember the empirical rule, negative one to one was 68%. That's for one standard deviation. Um, two standard deviations was 95%. And then three standard deviations, which we're not gonna use, is almost the whole curve was 99.7. So let's figure out which one applies here. So it looks like zero is here at the mean, and then we have one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. So we're gonna use some version of 68% because six inches is one standard deviation away. So let's mess with that a little. It's not quite 68%. So we're looking at greater than six, and what we know is in the middle is 68%. So to figure out the tails, we can do 100% minus 68, which means there's, oops, which means there's 32% left over, but there's two tails, so we have to split it equally, so each side gets 16%. So 16% of the time, uh, Hayward would have rain more than six inches. And this is a special trick when you land right on those perfect standard deviations. Otherwise, we just have to use z-score. Z-score would give us the same answer. This is just a little trick when you land. So for question 11, um, we're gonna look at the lengths of rainbow trout are normally distributed, so we'll use the normal curve, and we have a mean of 24.3 right in the middle. Um, the standard deviation is given, we'll use that in a moment, and we wanna find the percentage, percent is a hint towards area, of rainbow trout that are longer than 30 inches. So longer means greater than. So before I can use normal CDF, I need the z-score. Um, we're gonna go to infinity since we're going to the far right, which is 10 to the 99. So we only need one z-score. So it'll be 30 minus 24.3 all over 5.581. we get a z-score of 1.021. And then we'll just do normal CDF lower to upper. Upper would be infinity or 10 to the 99. And that'll tell us the percentage in decimal form. So second distribution, normal CDF. We've been using this a lot. So 0.1536, if you want to convert that to a percent, you just move it two to the right and you get 15.3. Um, I converted to a percent because it asked for a percentage this time. So 15.36 are greater than or longer than 30 inches. All right, let's just do the percentile. Percentiles backwards, whenever we're given percentile, that tells us the area. And it's a big area for 98%. So that means the area is 98% the z-score is unknown. So if we want to find the percentile, this is when we go backwards. So we're going to do inverse norm of the percentile, or 0.98. We get a z-score 0 0.054. And then we learned we could find the data value by doing the mean plus the z-score times sigma. So the mean was 24.3 plus 2.054, and then the standard deviation was 5.581. Um, we could type it all at once. If you do it piece by piece, you have to multiply first, um, but the calculator does know to do it in order. 
and we get 35.76 inches. You could round it up to 35.8. Um, the meaning of percentiles are 98% or less than. We can visually see that on the curve. So 98% of mature rainbow trouts are less than or shorter than, something like that. 35.76 inches. So the big thing with percentiles is we have the percent, we have a less than or shorter than, and then the amount that we found.